Let's deploy a Docker application on DigitalOcean. This is a 101 guide to deploying your Docker app on a fixed monthly cost server. The Docker app I'm deploying is a microservice that takes an HTTP request, does some processing with Python, and then returns a response. So when we configure this, we're gonna be opening up a port on the server so that we're able to communicate with it in this way. The Docker app I'm showing you today actually has some pretty bulky dependencies, and it implements a RAG pipeline for retrieval augmented generation. I talked about how this works at length in my previous video, so I'll share a link to that in the video description and probably leave one at the end of this video, but that's not a prerequisite for this video. Now, keep in mind, what I'm about to show you is something I've done in my career as a data engineer to deploy a production application, but it might not necessarily work for you, and it's not necessarily the right way to do everything. It's just a way. If you're new here, hey, I'm Alex, and on Zazen Codes, my goal is to help you become a more well-rounded developer. I'm teaching full stack data science and sharing my Zen lifestyle advice. Let's get into today's demonstration. The Docker app we're deploying is available in this Git repository. If you go into the source folder and rag microservice Python, this is the app that we're gonna be deploying. So what you could do is go back to the repository. You can grab the HTTPS URL, hop over to your terminal and say git clone and paste that in. And once you've downloaded that, go into Zazen Code's YouTube source rag microservice Python, and that's where we'll be working. I have that in a different directory on my computer. So let's have a look and I'm gonna open up Vim and we're gonna check out what this application looks like. We can run our application using this run app script. And then down here, it has some instructions on how to use our server just to make requests to it. Let's check out that run app script. So we build our Docker image and then we run the Docker image. Really simple, straightforward stuff. I have a few volumes and I have a port mapping. So our API is gonna be serving on port 8000. Next, I'll check out the Docker file. We're working from Python 3 and then I'm installing some requirements, setting some environment variables for configuration, and then we're running our application with Uvicorn. We have a fast API application, so I'll show you that now. If I go into reg microservice app, this is our application, and I have a fast API app running right here, and we're launching this with Uvicorn. So this app object, that's what's being referenced down here when I say, okay, look inside of the app file at the app object and then run that on port 8000. I'll hop back to our application, and this is what I spent a lot of time talking about in the previous video, which I will link to you. And so the goal of deploying this application is to make this ask endpoint available on the internet, on the IP address of our server. So let's show you how to do that right now. I'm gonna go over to DigitalOcean and I'll log in. If you haven't signed up for DigitalOcean, I have an affiliate link which you could use to do that. I believe it comes with $200 of credits over two months that you can spend if you sign up with that link. I like DigitalOcean because it has competitive pricing on the small servers and it has really good developer user interface. So I have a really good experience here. I'm gonna click Create and then come down and click on droplets. And this is gonna be how I create a new server. I'm in Toronto, so I might wanna select one that's the closest to me geographically. So I'll pick that for now. And I can select my um, operating system. I'm familiar with Ubuntu. That's what I'm gonna select. And I'm gonna pick the latest long-term support version. Now I'll come down and I'm gonna select the size of my computer. So there's various options for dedicated, memory optimized, say you could pick some pretty bulky stuff. Now these are grayed out because they're not available in Toronto. But if I go down to basic, I'm gonna try and pick the cheapest possible server to get started with. And I'm gonna see how my application performs on that. But then I can scale up if I need to. And in Toronto, the cheapest one I can pick is $6 a month. So let me see if I change my region and I want access to this $4 a month one. I'm gonna pick New York and I'll just, I don't know, sure, let's try data center three. That one does not have it either. Let's try data center one. So now I can select this. So I'll go ahead and pick that option and I'm gonna come down. Now I already have my SSH key set up. I could instead connect to this with a password and I could set the root password, but using SSH keys is much better practice. So if you haven't set this up yet, you could create a new SSH key. There's some instructions here for generating a new SSH key, but for me, let me show you if, um, 
I go to my SSH folder. This is where all of my SSH stuff is happening. So if I say um, there's a config file in here, and what I could do is just look at the head of this, and I'm going to look at, say, the first three lines. Perfect. So this is, tell, my computer is saying, this is my identity file. This, this is what it's named on my system. And how I created that was I just ran something called SSH keygen. And then I walked through the prompt here to create a key. So I could, I mean, I could do that right now. And you're seeing the default key it's telling me to use is this name. That's why mine is named that way here on my system. Um, so I don't want to replace that, right? So I could say test uh, SSH key or something, no passphrase. And then if I list test, I'm going to see that. That's my new SSH key. So I would want to take this public one. I'm going to say cat test SSH key dot pub. Um, that's going to show me the public key. And then I could, for me, I could say PB copy, or you could just select this and copy it. And then come on over to DigitalOcean and you can paste that in. That's how you might add a new SSH key. But, um, but then you'll also want to make sure if I come back up to here, that this part is set to that new SSH key so that your computer is knowing to identify you that way. Um, I'm going to remove this test stuff that I just created and actually just get out of here. And I'm going to come down. I'm going to select this for metrics and monitoring. So I'm happy to get some more uh, monitoring into my application. And for the name, uh, I'm not going to change the region, but I might scale it up. So I don't want any of that stuff. And I'm just going to call it reg microservice like that. And I'm ready to go. So I'm going to click create droplet. And now it's going to start spinning this up for me. Once this bar completes, it'll assign me an IP address and I can connect to this and try and deploy my application. So here's my IP address. I'm going to copy that, hop back to my terminal, and now we're going to try and connect to this. So I'm going to say SSH root at, and I'll paste that IP address in. Since it's the first time I'm connecting, it's telling me we don't recognize this server. Are you sure you want to connect? I'm like, yep. And check out what happened there. It says permanently added that IP address to the list of known hosts. Now, the basic idea is going to be to package this application up and copy it over to the server. And there's some things I don't want to include when I do this. Like, I don't want to include this notebooks folder, and I don't want to include my virtual environment. So let me show you my virtual environment. I'm going to get this one going. And let's look at everything I have. Let's look at LS, L, A, L, H, like that. Copying my virtual environment is definitely not what I want to do. This is a Mac OS virtual environment. It's not going to have any use on the server. I don't want it over there at all. So um, I, I'm going to only want to deploy like parts of this application. So I'm going to create a new script. And I'm going to say, I'm going to call it deploy app.sh like this. And the first thing I'm going to do is remove if there's a folder. I'll say RMR and I'm going to say deploy like this and then I'm going to make it. Now I'm going to start copying stuff in there. So I'm going to say copy R and I want this reg microservice in there. I want to copy what else? I want to copy my requirements. Um, I want to copy my .env file. I want to copy my Docker file. I also want to copy my volume. So I'm going to copy recursively my data volume into deploy like that. This is going to have the, the data for my rag system. Um, let me just show you that. So if I say tree data, this is I want all this available. This I'm going to need this information. Luckily, this is this data is all pretty small. I'm not concerned about the size of any of this stuff. And let's check it out. So uh, over here, I can now look at my deploy app. This is what I was just creating. Right. So here's what I just wrote. I'm going to clean this up a little bit just so it's more readable. All righty. And I forgot my shebang bin bash. So let's run this script out to test it. The first thing I need to do is say chmod plus x deploy app. And this is going to give it executable permissions. Now I can t um, run deploy app and I can see that this um, new folder was created called deploy. So if I say on deploy, this is the code that I want to put onto the server. I'm happy with this. I think this is going to work. And now I want to copy this over to my server. So in order to do that, I'm going to add a line to do to run that. And I'll say SCP dash R and I want to copy deploy over to my server. I'm going to hop back over to DigitalOcean, grab this IP address that it's assigned me, copy that. And that's where I want to deploy it to. But I need to say I want to deploy it to root like that. And then it's going to be in the root user directory and I want to name it rag micro service. Now let's run that and we're going to upload this. 
So there's all my files uploading and I can see them over here. Uh, and if I say LS rag microservice, I'm going to have access to my files. Importantly, I better have access to my dot env file. And I can see that right here. That has some secrets that I'm going to need to run my rag application. The next step is to install Docker on our server. So I can just look at the Docker documentation for doing that. Uh, come down here and for installation methods, I'm going to use this Docker's a apt repository. So let me copy all of this code here and I'm going to just make a new script and I'm going to say um, prep docker install.sh. I'm going to paste that in and then again I'll give that executable permissions with chmod and now I'm going to run that and install the actual Docker package down here using this code. This is going to be our like main installing code. So that's all done and I'm going to run that. In order to check that this has been installed properly, I'll just say Docker version and I'm getting some information here. I can also run this little hello world example. So I can do that. Now, I wouldn't need sudo because I'm logged in as root, but this worked just fine. Okay, now we're ready to build and test our application. Hey guys, just a quick interruption from the sponsor of today's video, which is myself. So you can head over to Patreon in order to help support the work I do. And I want to provide you with something valuable there for in return for your support. So I'm creating book notes. I like to read books on machine learning and data engineering and development. And so I create notes, which are slides, and then I walk through those slides. So these are like video walkthroughs. But the idea with these notes is that you could like plug them in and listen to them like they're a podcast as well. The first thing I want to do before running anything on Docker is secure my project. So I'm going to click into here and I'm going to look at my networking and I want to make sure that I'm applying a firewall. Right now there's no firewalls applied to this droplet. That means anything I run on this server, including things I run in Docker, if I share them with, uh, with the outside world with a port mapping, all of these things are going to be available on the public internet. So I want to lock that down. So I'm going to click create firewall. I'm going to call it rag microservice and I'm going to come down. Now we want to let all SSH traffic in. This is going to include my IP address as well as everyone else, but only I'm allowed because only I have an authorized key on the machine. The other inbound rule we need is to expose our API. And so I'm going to come down here and I want to expose, if I say it HTTP, it's just going to set this to port 80. That's like the HTTP port. If I do secured stuff, it's going to set it to port 443. But my port is different. I'm going to say custom. And this is the port I want. It's 8000. So I'm going to let traffic also come into my server through port 8000. People are going to be allowed to talk to my server through this port. And I could add only my IP address here. That would be a good idea, but I'm going to let anybody do that because I don't think anyone's paying attention right now and I'm just going to spin this down. For you, however, you might want to only add allowed IP addresses or in here you could also search for droplets. You could only allow certain droplets into this. Also virtual private um, networks. Great, so I'm happy with these inbound rules and these are the really important ones. For outbound rules, I'm going to let my um, my my server talk to anybody that it wants. So now let's apply this to our droplet. I'm going to search for it. I'll say rag microservice. That's the one. And I'll create a firewall. I'm going to head back to my droplet console here. You can see some logging, by the way, already getting picked up. Super cool. So now it's time to launch our Docker, to run our Docker application. Do that by going into rag microservice. And actually, I forgot to copy my run app. So let's fix that up here. I'm going to say copy run app.sh over to deploy. I'm going to have to actually remove this with how my script works. And then I'll come up here and I'll deploy it. And if I come down, it's recopying all these files over. And now I've got access to this run app, which I need. I'll make sure it's executable here. And we're going we're gonna to run this, but I'm actually going to run it in pieces. So the first thing I'm going to do is build it. And we're just going to monitor that and see how it works. So this is on my server, by the way. Um, so it, it's having to download all of the dependencies, like the image for Python 3.12. And now it's installing the actual requ requirements that I need in my Docker application. And like I mentioned in the introduction, these are some actually pretty heavyweight requirements. So right now my computer is downloading, or the server rather, is downloading quite a lot of data. Let's have a look at that. I can sign into my server here. I'm going to say SSH and pull that up. Now inside of here, I could, I'm going to just first run HTOP. 
Um, this is going to show me my CPU usage, which is currently like maxing out. And my memory is also very close to the limit of only half a gig. That's all I have. But I also want to see my storage. So if I type df.h, I can see all of the storage on my server. And I can see here, like I only have access to eight gigs on my main drive. And I've already used five of those gigs. So because this is the smallest server possible, we're already like pushing this near to the limit. Um, but let's see if we're, we're able to build it. So here I just got an error. Let's zoom in on that. It's saying no space left on device. So to me, we've hit a limitation uh, that we need to fix by scaling up. So over here in DigitalOcean, I'm first going to just turn off my um, my droplet. So when I select that, that this is going to shut everything down. If I come back to my terminal, notice how I've been logged out of both of these panes. So yeah, so now my server's off, which means I can upgrade it. So I'm going to click Upsize Droplet. And for me, I need to select Disk, CPU, and RAM. Notice if I select CPU and RAM only, I can upgrade to this guy, which has twice the memory, but the SSD remains the same size. And this is $6 a month. But if I click this tab, I just get this notice that my file system will be expanded, so the resize is not reversible. And for the same cost, I can also double my SSD space. So I'm going to select that one, and I'm going to come down and click resize. Once I do that, we're going to see in the top that uh, the progress of that, and that's done. It's saying my droplet's been resized, so let's just hop back to my terminal, and I'm going to use the same IP address, and I'm going to connect. Now, this is this is taking a long time to connect, and um, what I forgot to do was turn it back on. So let's do that. All right, now we're back in business. It's still saying connection refused. It's probably just spinning up. I'll try it again. And here we are. So I'm going to go into rag microservice. And now we're going to try and build this again. So I'm just going to type control R to do a reverse search. And then I'm going to say build. And here's the command that I run, uh, that I ran. So let's try that again. As you can see, we've installed our requirements now. So we push through the barrier by upsizing our droplet. And that took a long time, a couple minutes, but we're never gonna have to redo that unless we change our requirements. So that's the good news. And now this is built. So if I say Docker image LS, I can see that image on my system, ready to go. So let's run that. Now I don't wanna run this in detached mode because I wanna look at everything and make sure it's working. So I'm gonna say Docker run dash dash RM. And now what I'm gonna do is paste in everything below. So I'm gonna copy that, paste it in and run it. And this is going to run our Docker application. We're getting some logging, and this is stuff that I have set up to run when my server starts. So because this is all outputting, I know my server is running. And then I get some information, like we're running on this, this part of my local host. So the first thing I want to do is log into the server and attempt to talk to this application from within the server. So here I'm logging in, and now I can make curl requests um, to the server. So let's, uh, like to myself. So I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I'm going to set my server IP address. And here I'm just going to say it's the local host. So local host. So now if I echo that out, um, this is a variable that's been set. So now I can just run these commands that I have from my readme in order to test our server. Here I'm doing a health check and saying status is healthy. And down here I'm logging that I attempted to make that get request. So now let's try a post request. And this is actually going to trigger off like um, a, a request to ChatGPT in my case because of how this application works. Okay, so let's go and ask it a better question. Uh, my rag microservice knows about Rick and Morty. So I'm going to say, who is the coolest Rick? And down in the bottom pane, you can see that it's doing some work because it's got that request. It's a post request this time. And now it's giving me my answer of who the coolest Rick is. It's giving me two answers, by the way. The first coolest Rick is Evil Morty, which is clearly a Morty. So I'm a little confused about that one. But the next coolest Rick is Wasp Rick, which I actually don't remember Wasp Rick. So maybe I should go back to season four, episode one um, and check that out. Right, so we're just testing this from within the server, which isn't very fun, right? We want to test this on my system. So this is running on port 8000. You can see that here with the way I'm making requests. And I should be able to access this from anywhere. So let me get out of the server. And I just want to know the IP address. And I've got that right here. And now I'm going to go over to the internet and I'm going to try this out with Postman. So I can use Postman to make a GET request. And here's my URL and I'm going to say HTTP. 
and then it's on port 8000. So I'm going to specify that. And now what endpoint do I want to get? I wanted to get the health check one. So I'm going to ask for the health. And here I'm getting back my JSON response. The status is healthy. I could also just go ahead and like throw this into my address bar right here, make that request and do that. So this is, this is, this is going to be accessible from anywhere, anywhere on the internet right now. Uh, what, what else can I do? I can do a post request. So this is the actual thing I wanted to deploy. And let's go here and I'm going to say ask. And now I need to put in my post data. And I forget what that data should look like. So let me go back to my readme file. And what I'm doing is I'm sending JSON data and I have a question field. And then I have the, the name of that question. So down here, I'm going to write question. Tell me all the times that Morty saved Rick. And I'm just going to sort of bring this screen up. And I want to, as, as I fire this off, I want to show you the logging going on down here. So our server is going to respond to this in real time. So let me click send and we'll see down here. Okay. So it's got the question and it's giving me a 422 unprocessable entity. What's going on there? Well, Check out, I didn't do this right. I put it as a query parameter, but this is a post request. I need to send this as data. So I shouldn't have done this. I'm just going to copy my question. I'll delete it from here. And I'm going to go over to my body. And then for raw, I'm going to type some JSON. And I'm going to say question. And I'm going to paste the question in here. And now let's fire this off. So down here, we can see our server working. And it's saying we've properly process this post request. And back in Postman, I'm seeing 200. Okay. If I click on body here, we're going to get back the response. And it's telling me about all the times that Morty saved Rick. Awesome. Now this isn't quite running like I want it to for a like production style application. So let me show you one way to do that. I'm going to spin this down. So if I say Docker PS, nothing's running right now, um, but I still have access to that image, Docker image LS. And I get that right here. Um, what I can do is run this in detach mode. And so inside of my rag microservice, again, this is just in root rag microservice right here. And what I can do is just run this run app command. That'll make sure it's built. It's already built. So this won't take any time. You'll see that. And then I'm going to run it in detached mode. So let's do that. It builds immediately. It's already built. And then this is the um, like hash ID of the instance of the container that's now running. So if I do Docker PS, I can see that right here running up nine seconds ago and it's sharing that port. So this is my deployed application and I could leave my server now. So I'm just going to get out of here and now I'm going to show you that I can still talk to it. So let's go back to Postman and I'm going to make some more requests. Who do you think is the best side character. So we're getting back a 200 response, which indicates our server still working. You can check out what that looks like. It has indeed identified a certain side character of interest. So lastly, we're going to want to shut this down. But before I shut it down, I just want to take you to the networking tab and I'm going to scroll down to firewalls. And really, we should be like, this is the place to be extremely careful right now, because we've got our application exposed. It, what the real world implication of this is that anybody right now can hit this IP address at this end at this um, port and start using my API credits and just rack up a bunch of money uh, that I'm going to spend on on open AI. So I, don't, I wouldn't want to do that at all, right? I would want to make sure that I'm, I'm locking this down. So I would want to edit it. And one really simple way of locking this down would be to add my IP address. Anyways, what we really want to do now is just spin this down. So we're no longer paying for it. If I just go ahead and turn it off, that's not going to be sufficient. I'll still be paying for it just to sit there off because I, you know, this is reserved and it's like waiting for me. I need to remove this. So I'm going to go over to destroy and I'm just going to click destroy this droplet and I'll do the name confirmation and I'll click destroy. And now that I've run this, it's gone. It's, to it's totally gone. I'm not going to be able to SSH into here anymore. This is just going to give me a timeout error. And that means we're cleaned up and we're no longer paying for this. So you should see the cost reflected like within a day or two. And um, I expect the demo today would take a cent or less. And that's it for today's demonstration. If you like this video, I'd appreciate it if you give me a like and consider subscribing. You could also head over to my Patreon for my premium content and support the channel by signing up for my free 
free email newsletter. I just send one a week. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how to deploy this Docker application using the container registry, which avoids you having to build the image on the server, which as you saw, took a lot of space on our computer and we had to pay for a bigger server in order to do that. So I'm gonna see if we can get away with using an even cheaper server if we're using container registry. And then I wanna also show you how we can use that container registry Docker image to host this like a real microservice using Kubernetes. That way we can get auto scaling working for us. And I'm going to test that out and run some stress tests. So that's what I've got lined up for you. And I have links to that stuff on the screen right now. Thank you so much for watching and namaste.